Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday and happy holidays to all of you and happy Thursday to people on the other side of the timeline. Thank you so much for being here. Today we are going to make DIY felt angel tree toppers. This is just one example of a very plain but elegant angel. We're going to look at multiple wing patterns and multiple wing styles, different ways to make your dress and I'm very excited to do this with you. This is our last show of the year. Here and we're just so happy that you all are here joining us today. So if you're brand new, say, this is my first show. You'll see everyone's checking in in the live chat. Uh, so when you participate in the conversation, you get entered to win prizes at the end of the show. And if you're watching the replay, that's the full replay of Wooly Wednesday, comment down below. Or if you're watching the shortcut, comment down below and let us hear your favorite takeaways. You guys get entered to win prizes too. So on that note, I want to start by saying hi to a couple of people. Hi to Kathy in, Ro in Rhode Island. Elizabeth in Florida says it's her first show. Thank you for being here. Um, Susan in Iowa and Linda in Kentucky. Deb Sawyer, we hear it's your first show too. Welcome to the live show. Um, Susie is in Australia. She says it's Thursday morning, bright and early. Hope you have your coffee or your tea ready to go. Um, hi to Donna, says she got her email. And so remembered about the show. Glad you could be here, Donna. Hi to Melinda, Kathy, Nicole, Howard, AKA Susan, I heard is the one who's here. Christina in Poland says she's having surgery on Friday. So we're all just sending you our very, very best. And for everyone, just thanks for being here today. So usually we kick off the show um, with some prizes. I'm gonna do that right now for the replay last week. Congratulations to Kathy Alton and Colleen, is it Lady or Lighty? Uh, congratulations to you both. You win the prizes from last week's show. And for today, everyone, you're just gonna have to wait till the end. So now normally we kick off the show with a show and tells by the fairies. You get to meet our crew. They like to show you um, different things that you might use for today's project. But today's project, we're really building on what we did last week. We're just upscaling it a little bit. So as a special for today, we have all of the fairies that are on the crew today here to welcome you. So the most magical fairies of Living Felt. Yay! <laughs> Oh, oh, we're coming in. Holly, get in I'm here. Coming, I'm coming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank y'all so much for being here with us today. We just wanted to really quickly say thank you to all of you lovely people for hanging out with us all year, spending your Wednesdays with us, your your evenings, your mornings, wherever you're watching the show. We are just so grateful for you, and it really means so much to us that. We get to spend this community time and you know you, you guys send us photos either on the Facebook group or by email through the contact us page all year round and it just brightens our day to get to see what y'all create I mean seriously no matter how busy we are in the mornings <laughs> we like to pull up the photos and and the team looks at it and we ooh and we all and <laughs> you guys just brighten our day all the time and we've been getting a lot of really sweet notes through order comments, emails, phone calls, mm -hmm. everyone that's standing on the screen, plus Marie, plus Marodney. <laughs> 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 well, sorry, Rodney. <laughs> oh, everybody here that is involved with Living Felt truly believes that we have the best customers ever and that is the first thing that we tell anybody that steps in the door. Any fairy that steps into the door, we always start with the best place about working here is the people that are inside this building and also the people all around the world who order from us and uh, you just you ask us project advice. We are so grateful for you and you all are honorary fairies and we just love you so much. <laughs> You guys are getting a lot of love. Everyone's saying thankful to all of you. You guys are great. God bless all the fairies and Marie <laughs> and family. Merry Christmas. You all look so festive. Love you fairies. Happy holidays. Love sent your way. Um, this so is like a great big family. Best part of the week. Yeah. Oh, and more so and more sweet. and more than I can tell you. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That note, I think somebody somebody has something funny. <laughs> <laughs> Who's <Not> that? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. 
So I did want to ask you guys, since you're all like right here, mm -hmm. um, right. do you guys know what angels eat their tortilla chips with? <laughs> what do, what do angels, angels eat their tortilla, tortilla chips with? Guacaholi? <laughs> <laughs> I read it and I was like, that's bad. I probably should just say it. <laughs> yeah. hey. Oh gosh. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Happy holidays. Happy Bye. holidays. It's like a little train. Thank you all so much for being here. Happy Wednesday or Thursday, wherever you are in the world. These are the fairies. That is our crew who's here today. There are a few more uh, than could be here today, but we're so grateful for all of them. Uh, we are Living Felt based in Central Texas. We are also feltingtutorials.com. That's our online school. And thank you for being here for the live show. Where there is no kit for today, we're going to share all the supplies with you. Let me just pull those up real quick. These are the supplies we're using. There is a pattern, and I'll be showing that to you. Uh, you can check the links in the um, description down below for the patterns. You can see what you need there. We're going to be uh, working on multiple parts of our little angel today. And I want to tell you that this angel, the initial, the initial design was it for it to be a flat pack angel. So that means it can be kind of a temporary angel that you disassemble and pack away so she doesn't get damaged, or you can make her more permanent. We'll be going over that as we go together. So we just, we threw up the supply list very quickly, but if you follow the link in today's description for the supplies and the patterns, I really hope we added that. Um, um, did you pull up the supply list? There you go. That's what I was um, doing. If, if you follow the link in the description, it'll take you to the landing page for the video. You'll see the products that we have for this. And then I am going to be sharing a few things with you today that are just straight off of Amazon. Some come from the craft store. I'll tell you what all of those are. And we do have links in the description just if you're, if you're looking for them. Okay, cool. So flat peck angel or angel tree topper is what we're making today. There's a few different versions and you can grab the pattern uh, for the wings. We'll get to that chapter in a minute. You ready, Holly? I am. Okay, ready. thanks everyone for being here. Um, last week we made our little needle felted ballerinas, and we're going to build on those lessons today. The first thing we're going to do, let me get all this stuff out of the way, is we're going to make our armature. Um, yeah. The first thing we're going to do is make our armature, and uh, what we have here is our. 22 gauge wire armature. You can use something heavier if you want, um, but I'm gonna be using the 22 gauge because that's what we have. I was telling the gals that our 20 gauge armature is still on a boat, probably with a lot of people's other stuff. So let's make this armature. It's a little different than the ballerina that we made last week. And we're gonna get through this section and we're gonna like break in between the sections um, and answer your questions as we go there. Wrong mouse, so hold on. I'm just trying to cue up this here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna take two wire armatures and find the middle. Mine are 16 inches long. So in the middle, like the very middle, I'm gonna twist these together about an inch and a half. So you can mark yours if you want. For the sake of this little demonstration, I'm not going to. Notice I'm holding it right in the middle. I'm gonna open these up and just do, do like two, three twists to start. Just twist them very tight and then twist this side. Just twist them very tight. Don't go far. We just wanna make like an inch and a half and stretch these out. And I will measure this for us. Where's my measuring? Okay, I want it to be about an inch and a half long. So I need to go, I think that's about how long I want it. We're gonna make a little shoulder bridge here because I don't have any stronger, I do have stronger wire, but I didn't want it to be an 18 gauge wire. I just wanted it to be a kind of graceful and easily posed. That's pretty good. About an inch and a quarter, inch and a half is, is fine. So now what we're going to do is take, this is going to be the head loop, which we often make. So we're gonna fold one piece of wire in half here we're going to give this a pretty good little pinch. Use your wire cutters and 
I hope everyone can see okay. Should I bring the foam in so we can see? Would it be easier to see over the foam, Holly? Yeah, I think it would be a little bit. Okay, let me bring my foam in here. Then maybe that'll help you. Okay, so here's a, here's our wire starting there, and then this is going to be our head wire. A lot like our ballerinas that we did last week. Let me set this off to the side. We are going to make this little head loop here and we don't want it to go too far. I want this to be one inch or slightly longer depending on your head style. So uh, if you're making a round head, it's only gonna be an inch long in total. If you're making a more pointed or egg-shaped head, it can be maybe a quarter or a half inch longer. Um, so what I want you to do is just give it two good twists to start because we don't want it to be too long. Uh, one inch, I'm gonna give it one more. Mm, and that's pretty good right there. So we just want it about an inch long. I'm gonna give it one more. If the, the thing about this head loop part, if it's too long, you can cut the very tip right there. So if it's too long, you can cut it. What we wanna do is form a little shoulder bridge here. So these bottom wires are gonna come down and become the torso. These are arm wires. This one's gonna come down and become the torso. You don't have to twist it yet, just like that. And this one is going to come up here and join the arms to create some strong little arms. So just get that right in the middle. You don't even have to worry about twisting over the shoulder joint. It's really not that important. And then what we're gonna do is just twist this together nice and tight. So the way to get that even is to form a nice V here and then twist twist, twist. Twist it very tight and twist to, just go ahead and twist to the end and do this on both sides. So twist all the way down and we can cut it if it's too long anywhere. But what we want is um, about, we want five inches from the center of the head. So twist it all the way down, do that on both sides and then we're just going to twist the torso here. Because this is an angel tree topper, this is what we're gonna do. And we're gonna jump because y'all, this is a this is a buildup on so many things that we've done over the year or over time. This is what our whole body of our angel is gonna be built upon. So we have, when you measure from here out, it's going to be five inches from the center of the torso, or say you're aligning with the spine and the neck, out to the end of the arm is five inches. That's for this style of doll, this height of our angel. A true wingspan of the hands might be longer in a real human. Um, and when you're working on this little figure, they're gonna seem too long for her. But once you see her in the full doll fashion, it'll all make sense. So what we're gonna do is like, like last week when we started with our ballerinas, what we're gonna do is first start wrapping the neck you're gonna wrap the neck. I'm just gonna demonstrate this quick because we're gonna jump through the parts to get to the parts that are new. You're gonna start first wrapping the neck with your skin tone. I'm using clay today on my angels. So start wrapping the neck. Don't go too thick on the neck because you can always come back. And then you're gonna start wrapping around the torso. Now, you can do this part with your core wool if you want to. But I'll tell you that, that, I mean, the torso part, but we're not gonna do that much. So you're gonna wrap the neck to the torso, and then you're gonna wrap the hand to the wrist, just like we did last week. So let me take you there. This is what's different about last week. This is the base of our angel. We're going to wrap the skin tone only to the wrist because I'm gonna wrap this to match your dress color and that way the brown or whatever skin tone it is won't show through when you needle felt. So start with the neck and the torso, then wrap the wrist up the arm and I'll do this one right now. For anyone who's new, uh, if you missed last week, this is a spin-off of our little tiny Waldorf ballerina. So we want to take our fiber, this is our MC1 fiber. It might be different than what you have um, what is nice about this is it's going to really grip onto itself and be very easy um, to kind of dry felt even with your fingers. Um, we start writing, 
we start twisting right here just above the end of the wrist. So here, not right at the end, twist the body instead of wrapping the wool around. Twist towards the end, just being nice and even. And then when you get here, you don't need to put a lot of wool on there to get started. What we're going to do is just bend this back in. And you might decide now, like what's the front of her body and what's the back. To me, that feels like the front. The flatter part actually for me feels like the front and the rounded part feels like the back. So I'm gonna twist it this way and bend in that hand just a little bit. You end up just, you know, maybe bending it in a quarter of an inch so you lose about a half inch there total. So once it's bent over and make sure you don't have any sticky outy wires, then we're gonna wrap very, very tight. We only wanna wrap the hand to the wrist here, hand to the wrist, and take your time and make it nice and even because you only get one run of this. Now, unlike last week, I don't treat uh, these arms. I haven't treated these arms with any fabric hardener. That's totally up to you and optional. Um, but I didn't do that. The most important thing is that everything is nice and even. Mine's gonna be a little chunky because it's always chunky when I'm live. <laughs> For some reason, it's always chunky when I'm live. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So when we do it like this right now, we're like dry felting in our hands just a little bit. With this MC1 fiber, you can do that and it really will grip on itself. And then yes, we're gonna needle felt it a little bit and just get it to lay down. So you have wire under there. You're gonna have to go at a very, very shallow angle um, and just try and tack it all down. If you just can't get it, then yes, you can go back in with your, your power paw, uh, not sorry, your power paw, your Aileen's 50-50 solution, fabric hardener, whatever you have. Um, but you just wanna tack it down with your needle and then we're gonna wrap, wrap the arm and wrap this bodice. I'm using MC1 in cotton white and the most important thing really is to work in nice little thin strips that you can control. That's how you keep it from being lumpy and bumpy is that you tease it out, whatever that width is, you tease it out into these really narrow little strips. So you wanna control them. <clears throat> Again, you can start up just from where you are, just from where you terminated or just where you want to go so that you can kind of uh, snake your way back around. Let's wrap this arm. It just gives you a place to grip on if you start right there on the wire. Wrap over the end of the wrist, so we feel like we have a little sleeve here. And I always do that. You don't, you know, you don't have to. Um, you don't have to have so much brown under there, but it just tends to be my way. And then wrap your way back up the arm. <laughs> Sticky, y'all like the sticky outy wires. I think that's my new favorite <laughs> technical term. <laughs> now, you can go back over these uh, arms, you know, anywhere you want to add, but I would say the more even and uniform you can get it in the initial wrap, like if you're willing to unwrap and go back and get it even in the first place, the less fixing you have to do. So um, I always reach a point where I switch hands and then I'm turning this instead of the body. If this gets too wide right here, like so you can't control the lumpiness, then what you can do is just, before you go too much further, is tease it a little bit thinner and that will give you some room to um, control it a little more instead of it bossing you around. Just remember, you're the boss of the wool. It tries to get a little bossy. Okay. When we get here to the shoulder, the reason I left this the way it is, because we wanna kinda of go over the shoulder and then around, you come from a shoulder around the torso, right there. Wrapping around there, and then you can go over the around the body, you can go back over the other side. I tend to make the back you know, straight across, but this is kind of how we wanna do it. You can also go around again and back over, which is what I would do. So you come across the front, around the waist, back to the front, and then back over this side. And now you have this complete wrap. And anything else can be patched in. All of this and this can be patched in. Um, all you really want is that solid coverage and complete wrap. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna needle felt this down. And 
If there are any questions getting us up to this point, now's a good time to ask them. The um, Kim had asked if you could make other sizes of angels. I know we're talking about our size a little bit. Yes, yes, you can absolutely make them any size. So last week we made a little like, what, four to five inch doll. So you could make a little tiny one. You could use that wire armature. Um, you can use this wire armature and you can use anything in between. Just try and work out your sizes. What I will tell you, um, as I think I mentioned at least briefly in the beginning, is that a normal human arm span is, the arm span would be equal to the height of the being. So this angel is going to be about 14 inches tall, which we thought seemed like a nice height for an angel tree topper. And having her arm span of seven inches actually made her look odd. She just looked too army for being so graceful and conical shaped, which is what we were going for. So play with that a little bit, and especially with a delicate female figure, you might be making a male angel, you know, um, is, it might be different. You might want him to look more powerful, but with a female figure, you might want to shorten that arm span just a little bit so she looks a little more delicate. So there's a balance, and you can play with it just by, just by making the armature figures. Okay. And then the other question was, is do you have to use the fabric stiffener and is there another alternative that you would recommend? I, I, don't, I don't often use the fabric stiffener. Um, so last week was probably the first time y'all saw me use it on a figure that I can think of since the doll tutorial, mm -hmm. which was 2017. So, I mean, like on a needle felted figure. I don't often use the fabric hardener. So. If some people are talking about PVA glue and can you use that, look, some glues will get tacky and some glues will yellow over time. Some things are acid free and some things are not. So if you are wanting to use a fabric hardener, remember first that we're just creating a diluted, uh, a diluted solution. It's 50-50 water and fabric hardener. Um, the second is I really use it sparingly and you don't want to coat your pieces so much that it's visible or they become, you know, a new substance, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so, but I would choose something that is made for fabric and is acid-free and diluted. So find what you can locally. Yeah. I like that Dawn said she's now gonna start every felting session with, okay, well, I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good plan, Dawn. <laughs> okay, now I haven't needle felted my arm over here, which I need to do is getting a little roughed up uh, ideally, you would, you know, felt that before you go too far. That's me just jumping, finishing my little run here. So it is a little tricky if you're new um, when you're doing these little parts, but just take your time. And I do usually use my finest needles. This is my yellow 42 triangle. I was just using the green 40 triangle, which is the uh, also a fine needle, but not our finest. And you want to just needle felt these down. And notice the angle is like... 45 or sh more shallow to make sure you're not hitting that wire. And then just flip it over and do the other side because you don't want to poke all the way through. You don't want to be hitting the foam right here. If you hit the foam, then you're going to be making a mess on the other side. And I feel like in the essence of time, I'm just gonna have to fakey needle felt her. Okay, what other questions do we have? before we jump uh, from here, just while I finish up covering her little body parts. We don't have a lot of questions. No, we're there doing fine. There was some about the needles, which you touched on okay, already. Good. Across the back here, I'm just going to cover, you know, just cover your parts now. It's fine, because really we're just putting a little covering on there. So cover the parts that need to be covered with the MC1. You can pull it off, you can patch wool wherever you need. You don't always have to wrap around around. So this is the back and most of the back is gonna be covered by the wings. And it doesn't have to V down the back of the back like it does across the front. Okay, uh, Barbara says no time to chat, she's busy watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 
Yeah, there were a couple people saying they had to run out, so this is available for a replay later. Yeah, too. we do a replay, and um, I want to thank Sammy. I think, I don't, Sammy, I, tell us how to pronounce your last name. I want to say it's Jared. Um, we asked for suggestions of what do we call, not the full replay, but the condensed version, and so brilliant and so simple, Sammy said, shortcuts which That's I thought perfect. was like, that is exactly the name. So Sammy, we're gonna be sending you a prize. I don't know where you are in the world. You could be in the Netherlands, but wherever you are, <laughs> uh, Sammy, we're gonna be sending you a prize for that name. So we're gonna start a new playlist called Shortcuts. And what we're doing is, we're still experimenting, but it'll be the Wooly Wednesday tutorial, if there was one, there's not always a tutorial, but when there is, the Wooly Wednesday tutorial shortened, and we're playing with whether to have voiceover on it, which means we have to get back in here and record it, or do we just put it to music and have subtitles, or captions, whatever, I guess it's subtitles, so, not subtitles, captions? Captions. Yeah, captions. That's what we're playing with. Okay, so this is my very rough body of an angel, and I hope y'all for, will forgive me for that. But there she is. She's basically covered, and what you want to do is really take your time before you go to the next phase and get this all worked out. Now, what she needs is a head, besides a wardrobe, you know, work. She needs a head. Last week, our head was this big. This was the head for our little doll. This week, our head is this big. So if you don't know how to needle felt a ball, please revisit last week's video where we made our little ballerina. She's around here somewhere. This is the ballerina that we made last week, espresso, clay, and caramel. So her head is the same size as this one. And this is our head for today. Now you can make more of an egg-shaped head. So here's my quick and very brief, I'm gonna be very brief on this tip, but. This is the egg shape for the head, if you want to make it an egg shape for today. Um, this head, let me say is, oh, I know you want the measurements. It's about an inch and a quarter. Today, this, today's head is an inch and a quarter. This one is not wrapped in skin tone yet, so it's about an inch and a half tall, and about, you know, you can go up to an inch and a quarter around as well once you have all of the fiber on. This is what it looks like. If you go for this oval head, you're going to want your neck wire a little bit longer, and here's why. We're about to mount our head, but for the, um, the oval-shaped head, what you see is that there's more neck showing in the back, and you're going to want, especially, I mean, you can have a long, long-necked angel if you want, or doll, whatever, but you'll see that the wire is going to be here, and the chin is a little more forward. So go ahead and make your neck wire at least a quarter inch or a half inch longer if you're going to make an oval shaped head. We're gonna stick with round today. I'm pretty happy with the round shaped head. We're getting our all. Our alls aren't here yet, but they are on the way. They're on the way and they're not on a boat. So they're gonna be here faster than you. It's good to know. <laughs> yeah, before, before you know it. So here we go. We're going to bring our little angel to life. I'm not gonna take the time to glue it to, at the moment. Um, Catherine says, you're teaching us perfectionists uh, who can have fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly not much of a perfectionist, but um, okay, so here we go. There is our head mount, and you want to fix her securely, then go ahead and give a little, a little dabble do ya with your glue gun here, and let's get it on there securely. Oh, I'm going to need a glue stick today. Here we go back to it and a little glue just to just to have it on there right there okay so we have our body rough and our head ready to go and now we want to add our hair I feel I can hardly stand this looking at her it's driving me crazy <laughs> it's driving me nuts that she's not finished um, yeah, I don't know what to do about that. Okay, so now for our hair. Now for this uh, this pretty angel here, here's her hair. We're just giving her a bun. This is a hand blend actually of the two colors we used last week, which was barnwood and sand dune. But the shortcut to blending your own is to use something like, this is Pueblo, which is a merino silk blend and more blended than mine, which was just two colors or you could use spice, and we've used, I think, both of these on dolls in the past. I'm gonna stick, I think, with Pueblo because it's the most similar that you're looking at today. 
And to make this hair, we're going to take just a, just a split of this and it doesn't need to be all that long. What we need is enough hair to kind of go around her head and to the back a bit. It really doesn't need to be too, too long. So from here to here, I'm gonna start with that. This might even be more, more hair than I need. We'll see. If we, if we need to get to the back, we can, we can cut it if we need to. Now, go ahead and split this. I don't worry about the blends matching. I like when they're a little bit different, you know, from side to side. But we're going to start with, she's going to have basically a part down the middle of her head. So we will start, as always, by putting our wool to look like you're going to straddle it, but we're not going to straddle the head. We're going to make our dividing line to see how far forward do I want to come. I want it to be a little bit back, like a widow's peak right there. We're going to make our join. I'm lousy at parts, by the way, as an adult, and uh, my hairdresser always says, how do you part your hair? I'm like, I don't. I don't part it. It just, whatever it does is fine. <laughs> In that case, my hair's the boss of me. Okay, there. So we're gonna give her that really bad hair and then good hair. So here we go. There's there, now we have good hair wrapped around the back, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. One thing about Pueblo and these colors is they're merino silk blends, so they are a little more. They have a little bit more of the flyaways. So you might just find yourself peeling them away. You know, the silk tends to fly away out a little bit. Okay. So getting then, a lot of love though. People the, love the hair. Oh yeah. Pueblo. <laughs> Pueblo is pretty easy. It's like Insto Presto good looking hair. Can we, can we just make wigs out of Pueblo? I was just thinking that. <laughs> Instead perfect. of going for the big blow. Okay. So here we go. Just find that middle where you were and that's where you're going to want to needle felt it right there. I'm air, I'm felting in the air, which I don't like to do. So just needle felt again down the join. You can always go back and needle felt it in um, over the top. Just get it, get it anchored. Use whatever needle feels good. I'm using a 40. You can use a 38, whatever you have. Now see, as usual, my part's off the center. I'm keeping it because that's Marie. <laughs> An uneven part. That is so me. Okay, so now you see where we have this little foldy epi bit. So what we want to do is come in. You can come in with your most delicate needle where you want to, and we're going to needle felt right in the part. But you know, you can also needle felt wherever you want to accent uh, the stripes, and it's going to give her hair even a little more of a divided look if you will needle felt around those. So make sure you close that part in the middle there. And you don't want to tack it all down so it's mashed on her head. You still want her to have a bit of a full hair. So have fun styling it. And we're doing like a little face frame. Um, st style it around the face. You want it to look graceful, but you also want it laying down. So with it this way, now we're going to kind of pull it to the back. I think mean, she looks pretty, you know, just like that. But I like the updo. And she's like got a bald thing happening here. Where's my... Here's, I'm gonna prop her up just a tiny bit so we can see her. Okay, so this is, it gets confusing. You're like, that's the back of her head, it's the front of her head, it's the back of her head, it's the front of her head. No, so what we're gonna do is just take these ends, twist them around and start to make that sort of bun. You don't even have to worry about it too much. These are the under parts, but have fun with the little stripes that you get down here. So tack this down and these are all gonna support the bun that ultimately goes on top. So wrap this around and tack it around underneath. So you just have this little spiral going. And yes, you can also tack around here on the sides just a little bit. And then we'll go this other side too, okay? So now we're gonna wrap around. You can always add to these, you know, you can add hair, you can add braids. We made braids last week. You could wrap braids around. These colors are kind of guaranteed to do you right, this brown, natural brown stripes. Okay, wrap around. Is it okay to twist the ends like this? Give it a little twist and then wrap it in here. Just hold on to it while you do it, meaning so that it doesn't get away from you. Okay, right now it's just looking like a part of a messy bun, which is perfect. This is how this is how it should look. She's kind of got the uh, foundation for what's going to be the final bun. So take one more piece. It really doesn't need to be too long, 
Um, so I'm going to use about half of this to start and make see if that's right. What you're going to do is twist one end between your fingers. We're going to anchor it kind of right. You kind of want to start this at the top, I found. So um, where was at the top of her head? But anchor this underneath so you kind of get your, you have a good anchor point under here. And tack it down with whatever needle. This is my 40 triangle. And now what we're going to do is as we work our way around is we're going to twist. So get a good twist going. And then it's easier when the doll's facing you. But in order for you to see it, I feel like she kind of needs to be that way. And then you're going to twist it around, sort of going from the outer to the inner, just like you would expect. Just needle felt it as you go. You are multi-talented. I didn't know you were a hairstylist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should learn to do my own it's hair. It's impressive. <laughs> Every year I say that. I should learn to do my hair because I'm so boring. But my husband somehow, he just, he still just... So sweet to me, even though I'm like the laziest, <laughs> the laziest with the personal style this going on. Okay, there we go. We're getting this. And what's so fun is all these colors just had so much interest. See, I think, Holly, we just need to do each other's hair. Right. Like coming in the morning and we have our tea and our muffins. Where's our muffins? Oh. And hair, do each other's hair. I can do that. Okay, we're going to do it. All right, there we go. Just tuck that in. You could always add one more little bit of the bun if you want to. You could have give her a little, um, you could give her a little flower at the top, or a bead, or a rhinestone, or something. But she looks pretty elegant with just kind of with putting it together. Um, so Devin says, "I wish I could make my hair look like that." Devin, us too. I'm with Devin. Yeah. Uh -huh. Kathy says, you're anything but boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like her hair. It's like a fun little swirly. This is like a cinnamon roll. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> a cinnamon roll beehive. But look, we have like half an angel, except I'll know she's, she's not perfectly felted. Y'all will forgive me for that. But now what we need to do is build her body. So let's jump to the body part. And for that... What we have is for the um, for the the body parts, we are going to build her a cone body, and this is a two part cone body. In the instructions, I give you the exact pattern for this cone. Um, you can make yours a little bit smaller or a little bit larger, but I wanted my doll to be 14 inches tall, so you're going to get a two part cone pattern that you put together. And you're going to be making a cone. The first thing you're going to do is cut the cone pattern out of paper. This I printed mine on 11 by 14. So if you have 11 by 14 paper, you can print it on one page. Otherwise, you just use that one in there and it print it on two sheets of paper. Um, you're going to print this out, and you're going to cut out our cone out of felt and poster board. So. Here's how you, you're going to take this cone and you're going to basically, I think Holly showed it to us here on the poster board. So this is the poster board and this is basically one half of that paper pattern and the other half of the paper pattern. There we go. One half of the paper pattern. So you're going to just put it side by side and cut it out of poster board and then repeat out of felt. Now when we make our cones, I encourage you to make it out of the felt first, and here's why. Um, we're going to make it out of felt. I chose to hand sew mine, and I'm going to show you the stitch I used, which is very simple, and most of you know it. But you could also glue this if you want to glue it. Um, I chose to hand sew mine, and here's what it looks like, uh, which is really clean. You could even have it, I don't know if you can see that. Try to... uh, let me, I'll just bring it up in this case. I know there's a lot of light, but that is just a hand-stitched line. It's very clean and very nice, and the felt, as you know, does not fray. So this is 100% wool felt. It's not, you know, any acrylic or whatever. So you can hand-sew that, or you could glue it. Now, Holly made an angel last night, same thing. She made a littler one, and she used pinking shears on this cut, which looks lovely, and then glued it. So that's your option. I'd like to show you quickly that stitch that we used for this and it's just a um, this is just a back stitch for those of you who don't know it's super simple and does not need to be intimidating 
at all. So here's how we do a back stitch. A back stitch is going to give you the best like secure seam. I normally just use sewing thread. Today I'm demonstrating with embroidery thread just so you can see it. You make one anchor stitch. This is going to be knotted back here. Make one anchor stitch to the face of your fabric. And then we're going to come up a distance, if you will. Let's come in just a little bit more, Holly. You're going to come up a distance, if you will, from that last stitch. Um, this is going to be, say, this is our, let's call this our anchor stitch. I'm just making up terms. And then this is our first stitch. For a back stitch, what you're always going to do is this, the stitch that comes up is always in the middle. So you're going to enter from your anchor stitch and then go equidistant from where you came up to the front and pull your thread through. So again, I normally use sewing thread. I suppose you could use embroidery floss, especially it might look pretty if you want to show the thread. Oh, yeah. That could look pretty. So then again, you come in, you go in basically at the last stitch and then equidistant away from where you came up. This is a back stitch. It's very therapeutic to do. Um, it is going to be a nice strong joining stitch and will give you a very nice, you could use this for a hem and you could use it to join anywhere you want to join two pieces of the fabric. So that's the back stitch and that's what I used on the cone pattern, on the cone felt right there. Now, the next thing you want to do is to make your cone out of a poster board. And the reason I have you make the felt one first is you want the cone pattern to be slightly more narrow. This is uh, slightly more narrow than the felt because the two are going to go together. So you want this to be sure to fit into there. Make this one second and then use your hot glue gun to seal her up, okay? That's all you need to do. So we have one pre-made ready to go. And I would say for this, my lesson is don't get the most rigid poster board you could find because mine creased and this poster board is thinner, cheaper, and didn't make these big blobby marks. So that's my hot tip. So glue this down so that it's smaller and fits right in here. And now we have our little cone for the doll. Okay, Holly, what do we think? I think it's great. Um, somebody, let's see, will the pattern, when you print it out, does it fit on regular paper? The pattern that we're supplying you fit on regular paper. So that's why it's just uh, eight and a half by 11, but you have to print the cone in two parts and all of the wing patterns are gonna fit. So when you print out this pattern, you're gonna print two sheets to get the cone pattern and then you just tape them together. So you're gonna attach the top to the bottom and you, there's little marks A and B. Just attach them together and cut that out of paper. Yep, this on one. Yep. Okay, good. All right, so now you can make your angel as simple as this and decorate the felt. So I'm gonna show you just a couple of things you can do to decorate the felt, but then we're also gonna look at uh, making a dress with a cinch or in a cinch, um, a really easy way to do that. So here is the uh, first step for this. Oh, should I? Yeah, we're gonna do this, this little adornment first. So here we go. Um, one thing you could do, you could cover this or this could go in the back. So this could be in the very back of your angel's dress and just be hidden. Or you could use that join right there. And I got these, I didn't include these in the Amazon links, but I can. Um, this little trim right here can just cover the front of the dress right there. And I don't want mine to go all the way up because I'm gonna put a ribbon on the doll. So we can just run right over, I'm just gonna run over the stitch and not really worry about the join. I'd rather hide, I think I can do it right in between there. So you can just hot glue gun this on and I would try not to go too far with each stretch if you know what I mean. Like take it slowly so you stay on track. So option one is just decorate your felt. Now I bought ribbons and lace and Holly knows <laughs> I wanted to make like my usual, I wanted to make like five angels and time is a thing. <laughs> 
Time is a thing. And so if time is a thing for you also, this might be a really fun way. You could hand embroider on this felt. You could needle felt on this felt. You know, there's so many ways you could decorate this little wool felt. Um, but gluing is an option. And I just want to say to all of my felting friends out there, you know, that we can use things other than wool to make our stuff. And the last couple of shows, I feel like I've been wanting to just say, hey, you know, it's okay to pull out the glue gun. It's okay, you know, to bring in glitter or rhinestones or whatever. Everything doesn't have to be wool, unless you're a purist, and I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a purist at all. Well, these are so fun. I was so compelled. I had to make one last night. Yeah. <laughs> Hers is cute. We're going to show Holly's right at the end. Um, okay, here we go. Or so my last little strip. I don't want to go too high there. And I'm going to take this all the way. Okay, so now I told you, and I'm going to stop here with my decorations. Bear with me. Sorry, loud sounds. I'm going to stop here with my decorations. Just put the last one on uh, right there. That is really an elegant way just to dress her up to start. But now I told you that you can make either um, flat pack angel or permanent angel. And so right now you have to make some decisions. I wanted to design an angel that you could actually disassemble. And here she is. She's looking pretty good. Let's see if we can see her over here a little bit. Um, here we go. She's looking pretty good. She's kind of rough, right? She's not finished, so finish. Um, I wanted to make an angel that you could flat pack away at the end of the year and not worry about not having a box um, big enough to put her in. And so now's the time to decide whether you're gonna make permanent angel or flat pack angel. So if you're gonna make flat pack angel, you can, um, you can just faux join her for display for the season if you want to make permanent angel, now's the time to glue her body into this cone, which I'm not going to do because mine needs to be more needle felted. So if you want permanent angel, get your glue gun and attach her permanently at this point. If you want flat pack angel, you can pin her to the felt, which I'm going to do. And you can do that while you're, I've lost all my, my white pins. You can do that while you're planning as well. You can um, pin her in from a wool part to a felt part and she you know tends to hold together pretty well you just don't want to poke yourself so you want your pin to terminate back in so if you're going to put her on top of a tree or on the mantle you can put a little pin in the back and then to finish decorating the front in like just some real plain simple ways you can see on this gal I chose a um, let's look here real quick. Uh, I chose uh, just a velvet ribbon, which I have somewhere, my velvet ribbon. Oh, it's underneath. Help me. But you just moved it. I can't see, Holly. I need help. It's right behind the mason jar, underneath. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't oh, know I how I saw that. I need <laughs> help. Okay, so here um, we have this uh, velvet ribbon. It's a nice way to add a night, like if you have a wide ribbon or something like that, you can run it right around her torso. It's very elegant and it hides that join. So if you're doing perma angel, then you can glue this in place. Um, and you can add any other kind of ribbon as well around her body. So we're just gonna do a wrap and um, do a wrap right here. Let's see. I'm gonna wrap it all the way around and then pin it for the moment since we're just gonna get through our tutorial. So pin or glue or stitch it in place so that you're happy. Let's see, I'm gonna use an obvious one. There we go, so attach yours in place. And what else? You can add any other adornments. I found that the um, bridal section is a really great place to find stuff. Oh, I'm using my one. I didn't bring all my trims with me. The bridal section is a really great way to find white and silver and sparkly things. And something you can add, and I'll add it to this gal since we have more to do on this gal, is like a nice 
um, ribbon that she can hold. And so this is the ribbon. Let me see if I can show this to you. This is the ribbon that I got. This is in the Amazon links down below. It's a nice wide wired ribbon and it looks all pristine like this. But if you scrunch, if you just kind of scrunch it up a little bit, <laughs> literally scrunch it up and give it some movement because you don't want it to be so perfect, then I like it to go. It'll be, we'll do it on this gal. I'm going to show you another dress in just a moment, and I don't know if I mentioned that today's show definitely is going to go over. Well, they have all kinds of ideas for dresses, too. Do you? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you a quick cinch dress, but this is how we do, how you can just add this little bit of ribbon. We'll add just a lovely bit of interest to her. Let's see if I can. I can barely see what I'm doing, but there we go. There we go. She can just kind of have it come around her shoulders. Bear with me for a second. With the wired ribbon, you can really pose it and have it go where you want it to go. So that ribbon will add a little bit of interest right there. I'm gonna put the rest away. Okay, so that is an idea and flowing robes, of course. I want to show you how to make really a very simple, simple dress that can go over. Now, normally, um, I think I'll, I'll show you how it would go over Hmm, I don't want to really take her apart. <laughs> um, but we can, we'll, we'll put it on, on this gal that we're working on just so you can see. So what I have here is just a piece of fabric and I've already cinched it. Um, let's see, I want to show you how you can make something just with a cinch. So let me show you, I'll start by showing you the cinch. It's not a cinch, it's just a running stitch, but let me show you how that works. So. Um, we're going to take a piece of fabric and this fabric right here before it was made into this shape is, let me see if I can do this, mine is 14 inches long and 36 inches wide, folded in half. Folded in half and not even hemmed, here you go, there's the evidence, it's not even <laughs> hemmed. So that's an option. Or you can hem it, you can hem your fabric, you can get a silk scarf like our Ponji scarfs, the Habitai scarfs, and you can just hand stitch it or machine stitch it into a tube. This one is more narrow, so you could do a narrow tube for the dress I'm going to show you. If you use a scarf, it's hemmed on both ends. So you can do a narrow tube or a wide tube uh, and or even a piece of fabric, like I said, that's not, that's not finished. But what we want to do is a running stitch across the top so that we can cinch it like this. And here's what that looks like. A running stitch is very, very simple. In this case, we want to knot our thread. What we wanna do is knot the end of our thread and you want to go into the fabric, whatever it is, in this case, a dress or skirt, from what will be the outside of that garment. So, because we're gonna do the cinch from the outside, so there. And then all we're gonna do is the running stitch will become a gather stitch. So anyone can do this. Like I said, you're gonna go, I don't sew. Well, I don't sew either. I sort of, I, I felt so fun is what I do. I barely sew. Okay, that's all you want to do to do this gather. And then when you get to the very end of the, the fabric, what we do, this is stiff, the felt is stiff, so it's not so easy, but you're gonna be able to scrunch the, the garment on that stitch. It'll crinkle up like this. So you're gonna do it at the top, or in this case, like if this were a raw edge, I would fold it over and then do the running stitch right across that area, and the raw edge would then be inside. So once you do a running stitch on your fabric, Here's an example, and I'm gonna show you how you could use an example like this. This is the end of a pillowcase that I just sewed lace to the bottom. I did a running st stitch across the top. These little clamps here are just holding onto my thread for me. And this is why the thread needs to come out the side because then you can just cinch it into a gather. That gather could be a skirt, or this can turn into a collar and sleeves. I will show you that or a gather like this one here can become like a skirt. So I will show you that also. Let's use um, this little angel and I have to actually take her apart. So this is a good reason to maybe plan a little bit with pins before you make your final, 
you know, before you glue anything, you might try a few things on for size and see how you like them. So we can take this little skirt. You can come out a little bit, Holly. Yeah. Thanks. Take this little skirt. And of course, I wouldn't have put all these adornments on there. This is, uh, this silk here is margalon, so it wants to snag on everything. Um, so here's what I would do, is I would put this on the doll here. Just pretend this is the, uh, I'll show you this over here. Let's go this way. Here's the, here's the skirt. Then the doll goes back in, wherever you want her. And then here, this join, I like to, now she looks, I, that's kind of fun. Yeah, right? she's so she looks very, She looks very bridal. She like does. I think this would be such a great wedding gift. Oh, or we've got quite right? a few people yeah. with their as, wheels turning for that. As soon as I saw her, I'm like, bright. you're so bridal. But you know, she can be as ethereal. As soon as you give her wings, then she's no longer bridal. So then what you can do is just hide that skirt joint, hide that join. And some of you are like, oh, I like her plain. I know. <laughs> and then some of you are like, oh, I like the skirt. I know. It's like you, that's why you want to make more than one. It's like they're kind of addictive. They're so addictive. Aren't they? Holly did, Holly made, did, had angel therapy last night. I did. Right? I might have it's to just, have it again tonight. It was just <laughs> angel therapy. Now, I'm just peel, pinning this on in the sake of time again. So you're going to want to find your way. But I think that's so fun and so pretty. Such a lovely, quick way to get there. So, so we've shown you a plain felt dress. This is a plain felt dress with the ribbon um, and the cinch dress. You could make it a cinch dress all the way up, a cinch skirt. Um, and if you do something like this, and I don't really want to put it on her too much, but this, like let's say the whole dress was plain, you can put this over and then this is heavy. I didn't like it in the this thick cotton but what you can do is the arms can stick out and then you can just hem it under here and you get like these angel sleeves so it's an option to to give like a collar and i think holly you chose that for yours we'll show it at the end yeah mine might have no neck uh -huh, yeah <laughs> she, she needs a neck so now that we have our dollies why do our dollies our dolly angels why don't we look at how we get to the wing bits but before we do do we have any well, we have questions some, or things we, have we should fun, pass on. Fun things. Well, we did have okay. one question, which um, was about how much yardage do we need in felt if the we're felt, just covering it. Okay, the felt sheet was. We started with a. You need a 15 inch square. And so our, our what's it called? Uh, our eighth of a yard is our, 18 by 18. Our eighth is an 18 by 18. So you would have enough to do this doll on our eighth of a cut of felt. So this is a 15 by 15 square. Mm hmm. Um, the only other hey, question we had was, uh, would you be concerned about the glue yellowing at all? No, uh, no, I'm not concerned about this about this glue yellowing. Okay. No, so just get a glue that says at least it will not it will not yellow. We just had a DV. Uh, it's Corbett. He had uh, Diane. Diane. I, I can't tell sometimes without just That's the okay. initials. Yeah. Um, great idea to put like little flowers or little things under that flowy skirt so it'll oh, kind of stick out and be kind of pretty. Under, like in color or something. Yeah, like in color. That's a nice there. idea, Diane. I like it. Yeah, even this, you know, shows shows a little bit. And you can also trim the bottom. I have lace and stuff and other ribbons. You could trim the bottom. This is a very delicate silk, so I might go with something either a, a regular gauze chiffon, not the margalon, um, or habitai, pongee, a little bit heavier weight. Mm -hmm. But the cotton really felt too heavy for me. She looked like Little House on the Prairie, which wasn't what I was going for. <laughs> okay, so I want to show you two wing styles. The first one are the organza wings that we've already um, shown here. So let me show these to you a little bit. We can come here and have a look. These are the organza wings. I have adorned them just with a little something that I found in the bridal section, which haha, -ha, when Holly showed up with her angel today, had the same flower and so that's just from Hobby Lobby so whatever's the craft store go to the bridal section you'll find stuff but so these organza wings are, are multi-layered and I want to tell you that we actually designed these wings last year but I just couldn't get on top of my timeline to get them done but there are three different wing styles you can choose I'm going to show those uh, the styles to you really quick and we're going to look at two different ways to make them so the first are the wings that we're using today we call them elongated they're elongated down wings and I feel like my, Rodney's like my husband's like those are the wings to do mm -hmm. so that's the wings we decided to show two different ways in the one wing style 
uh, and then there are the uppy, uppy wings, pointy uppy wings. These are all multi-layered, so you can use like one size, two sizes. This, like for example, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, I think, sizes within the pattern. So you can use one, two, three, five, all six, whatever. Um, and then I'm gonna pull these out. Then we have the rounded, we call them rounded. You could use these wings two way. They can go this way or they can go this way. It really just depends on how you're feeling. And I think for like our little ballerina doll last week, well, we liked them both ways, right? Like mm -hmm. this, very cute. And then she, they could go up as well, very cute. So, so yeah, yeah, both ways, these feel a little more fairy, right? Yeah, for sure. And these feel a little more angelic, whatever you're feeling. So in the pattern, if you choose to get the pattern, you're gonna get all three wing patterns in the same size we're using, and you can just downsize them, upsize them, and work with the paper to get the right size. Cut them out of paper, you know, get whatever size works for you. So how to make the organza wings. The organza wings are so darn easy. So the first thing, wait for a second, is you're gonna get this six, you can get, start with something as small as this, the six inch organza. I linked to it in the Amazon, but look, I even found it in the grocery store, like because it's Christmas in the Christmas packaging aisle, they had this and I even have sparkle tool. You don't have to, but this is what we're using. Six inch wide. Go ahead, Holly. And here's what we do. You're going to want to take two layers of this organza and you want to be able to cover whatever wing style you're using. So two layers of organza. And what I've done is I've taped them to baking parchment that's been folded in half. So this is my baking sheet. I have two layers of organza taped here to the top of that baking sheet. And then you take the wing pattern that you want to make. I know I just pulled it out of there. What did I do with it? I'll use this one. Um, <laughs> just fold it out of there and you want to slide it in between the sheets so that you can see it and so that it's underneath the organza then you're going to take your glue gun and all you need to do is trace around the outside of the shape so you want this tape down so there's no bubbles and it doesn't move around but the hot glue is going to hold it together so I found it easiest to kind of you know, go around the bottom. You can go back over any area that you didn't get and you can stop um, that wherever you want to. So trace around the whole of the wing with your hot glue. Ah, and don't put your fingers in the middle. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go this way. It's a little bit easier if you can see the shape and just trace around the whole thing. Once you trace around the whole thing, just let it cool and you want a good adhesion all the way around, so make sure that the glue is going all the way through. Let it cool, and then when you're done, put this face down and peel the paper off, as opposed to, it doesn't really break, but anyway, you're gonna separate it from here, and this is what you're gonna get. You're going to cut this out. Once you're all done, is cut out the individual wing shapes in multiple layers. So you have this little glue. You can also treat the inside, which I've done on a couple, is treat the inside with extra glue, but just cut it all the way out until you have all of your wings. So this is our current um, angel girl. I'll take this off so you can see them. And then I'm gonna give you one other cheat uh, if you don't want to permanently attach them to her. So here we go. These are the, these are the wings in that pattern, elongated. Um, pattern. So I've stacked them all together and in some places you can see I just put little reinforcements because I wanted it to feel very strong and stack them all together. You could glue them all together at this point. You can sew them all together because this organza is very easy to sew through. Um, you can you know attach them permanently for storing for um, the non-display months and you can attach a pretty little thing like this to the back and you can just glue that you know, glue this piece on there. I'm tempted to do it, but I wanna just keep, keep going. So in this case, now attaching them to the back of the doll, you can glue it onto the back of the doll or you can uh, pin it. And I like to pin it so there, it's like right about there. This scoop kind of comes to just the top of her dress. And then I'm just pinning this 
hiding this underneath. So again, this is flat pack angel. And it becomes teaching angel for me. It's why so many of my stuff gets unfinished because <laughs> I leave them so I can take them apart. And there we go. So those wings are attached. So those are the organza wings. You don't have to use all the layers or all the sizes. You can use whatever you want. I want to show you one more thing in case uh, you don't want to pin it or glue it. Um, on the, if you want to glue all the wings together, this is a little more how I did my like adult fairy costume is there is a wire, I just glued a wire to the back of the wings. And then what you can do is in the back of your doll, and this will be like the um, inner wings, not the back wings, right? You can slide that down into the waistband of her ribbon and of her gather and they will stay on there. So that's a little more simple version, but you can see that they're staying on by themselves. And um, it's just using that little waistband. Cool? The, everybody's in love with the wings. Okay. The wings. I think, let's see, what did we get? Mind blown. Mind officially blown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have more wings for you. Now these, I've, I've, I saved these and I don't think we showed these, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with a little feather. So here we go. These are feather, full on feather wings. And in the description, I've linked to uh, the feathers that I used. But I told Holly that, that I didn't have the right feathers when I made this one. And I have some of those here to show you and I link to them. So to do these feathers, you can use um, this same template that we used for these little gauze wings here. Or, or you can just cut them out of cardstock, uh, poster board or cardstock, cut out this little shape. And what you want to do is get your feathers together. And uh, this is for like big, all doing the elongated down wings. I'm not going to have time to show you all of this, but I'll tell you that you want to stack your wings down. So the way to do that is um, you start with this piece and you get the, the feathers that are going to be coming down. All of this stuff here, these big, ends, uh, what is that end called? I don't know, but those big ends, cut them off because they're just gonna get in your way, but these things can be bent and manipulated. So what you wanna do to build your wings down and long is to glue them on so they're sticking off, and then you're going to get them right up to the end there, get them to go where you want them, and then you're going to double stack them. So onto this feather, we'll put another feather. This is the back of the wing, by the way, you're looking at. Um, I mean, this is the face front. This is what's gonna face you. So you wanna build both sides at the same time. And what I notice is that some wings feathers bend this way and some feathers bend that way. So if you find one that bows this way, you might like it on that side and they kind of stick up too. So find the ones you like, and then what you're gonna do is just tape, you know, stack them, shingle them on top of each other. I can speak. Wet, uh, get glue on that part. And then just, this is how you can get them longer than what you have, okay? And what you're gonna do is basically, you can cut these wherever you want so that they're not sticking they're not, you don't want them to be too much to deal with, but you'll have pointy w feathers, which you want to be on the end. We're off camera. Uh, you want the pointy feathers to come towards the end and all these billowy fussy feathers, you want to wrap them, as you glue them on, you can bend them to do what you want as you glue them in place. So I'll do that one just so you can see it. Cut off the end, because you don't need that in your way. You're gonna bend it to go where you want it, and you want to use all this frilly, foofy stuff. That's what all the little feathers are good for: is hiding all the other parts of the feathers, and bend it and put it in place, just like that. There we go. Now, anything that you don't love anything that's not really working that you want, so all those funny little bits, that's what the little fussy feathers are for. And so you're gonna see that I've given you links to a couple of different feathers, and what you're gonna do is just keep layering and cover that stuff up. But there's even little, little feathers. Use all of those to cover 
everything there. So what you're gonna do is cover, this is the part that's facing out from the angel, uh, like whichever way you like the feathers going. And you're gonna cover one side completely and then the other part, you don't need to put a bunch sticking down, you just need to cover so it doesn't show. But you can see that I put in here, you can see start to see the shapes now, the way I've shaped and layered and layered. And these are goose feathers, by the way, so, um, yeah, they're probably bleached or whatever. My grandmother, when I was young, used to make goose feather pillows for the new couple in the, Aww. whoever's there's a new couple in the family. She, I'm pretty sure she plucked those babies herself. <laughs> Tough stuff, that grandma. So this is all you have to do is follow these shapes of the cardboard, and you can see the cardboard under here, so just keep filling in until you get this solid little wing plate, if you will. Okay, let me get this stuff out of the way. And the same on the back of on the back of your angel, you just have to decide how you're going to affix them. And while you're planning that, you can do the um, loop join that I showed you a moment ago. Um, you could glue them on permanently, or you can pin them on a temporary angel with a white, I don't have a white one right now, so bear with me. I don't have, my white pin is in use. And you can go right through that cardboard, poster board, cardboard, right there. So let's see if we can see these gals, and get them fixed up a little bit. I probably messed up her skirt. That's what happens when you're, you know, depending on the order that you do things, and I didn't pin her back in place, um, but you can always use the pins as you're planning the different stages. And the only other thing that I want to add to this idea, um, we gave this gal a really nice ribbon, but you can also give them something to hold. Um, this is good. So the arms, remember the arms looked really long before, and now they seem like a little more um, fitting since she's actually very tall. And you can give her something very lightweight and simple to hold that can add like just a nice little elegance. Um, or you can make them, what do I have? Like you could make one of them very like archangel type, you know, let's see if we can, I don't think we can pull that. Let me see if I pull it back a little bit. Can I show you? Like a very archangel type and you'd have to do some figuring out here to get this mounted like for, where can I get in here? <laughs> I can't find my, <laughs> I can't find where I need to be. I'll go, I'll go face front and see if we can get them in. Yeah, like a very archangel style, but you'd have to figure out, you know, how to wire that to the wings and have a really strong wire support on here so that it stays. But like if it's at the top of the tree, you might want lights shining from it. And, you know, I made these angels white, but gosh, you could have rainbow angels and um, non-binary angels, you know what I mean? You know, any kind of angels you want. They could have rainbow hair or whatever it is. Um, and there's just a lot of fun you can have with that. This one could be holding. So this is just an, a Christmas ornament. This is just a vine. I think I found that in the, the bridal section too. <laughs> so there's really lots and lots of options for making your angels. And um, did I show, I showed them all the wing patterns. So all the wing patterns are in here in this um, this pattern which you can get on our website and what you'll see is the wings are you know we just used as many pages as we needed to to get them all on there and get them cut out once you cut them out of paper you have them it's gonna be I'm waiting to see which angels we see more of wings I mean feathers or organza oh, it's kind of a toss-up everybody loves that organza right? and then everybody was like oh feathers yeah I can't and I'm sure y'all are going to come up with something else even oh I decided to use black you know right whatever it is Christmas paper I can't wait to see and I hope you have fun with this project it's really been fun for me I know there's times I tried to make it more complicated than it needed to be <laughs> And in the end, I found that I really like the simple, the simple, elegant, you know, angels. Very, very simple. And you can make yours as dressy as you want. So, yeah. Any final thoughts or questions or anything? Um, so we did have a question about the organza wings. Just to reiterate that it's just fabric and glue. It's just fabric and glue for these wings right here. And then um, somebody else suggested, and I'm sorry, I did not write it down. I think it was Cindy to use, um, you can get glitter glue gun. Oh. Glitter glue sticks. 
I, I have glitter glue, but I don't have glitter you glue get sticks. Glitter glue sticks. I bought actually some glitter stamp glue sticks that don't fit this glue gun. Um, they fit my other glue gun, and I was going to use them for something, and now I'm challenged to think of what it was, but I haven't actually. Just if you need a little extra spark. Yeah, a little actually good idea. Yeah, well, we'll be making more wings and such next year, but these angel wings in particular, and like I said, these little ones um, somewhere, the pointy wings, the rounded wings can would be good little fairy wings as well, but we'll have more. And I just want to say thank you so much. We're going to give away some prizes, right, we Holly? Are. Okay, are. I'm going to park these gals right here. They can cover the glue gun. She dropped her vine already. You've got to do your job, Angel. Okay. <laughs> just a vine, huh? Oh, Kathy wants to see my angel. Oh, right. Okay, Holly. Holly's angel. She's so cute, and she, she's, she's a little nineteen eighties. I, I, I had, like I had too many. Um, Adornments. Here's, yeah, here's here's Holly's angel. She's so cute and she's small. And then Holly, you said this ribbon was from your wedding. It's from my wedding, so it's old. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like that she has this feather boa, which is to me feels very Holly. And I, and I feel like tonight I'll maybe I'll try some wings because she then, is missing her wings. All right. And then here's the collar, the cinch collar, like we talked about, and some lace trims and locks for her hair. And I could have uh, done this all night. The same, yeah, the <laughs> same flower as I had, which I just think is so fun. I know, that's we, funny. We happen to have the same things. Yeah. Holly and I, we, we're going to do crafting retreats, we've decided. <laughs> Between her stuff and my, oh my stuff, gosh. we can. <laughs> but we have some prizes to give away, y'all. Yeah. And, and before we do that, I just want to say thank you all so much. Some of you are brand, brand new. Thanks for being here today. Some of you have been with us for many, many years, and we're just so grateful for you. And we have a lot of fun, right? It's just our pleasure to do this with you, and we look forward to lots more fun uh, next year and want to wish you all a beautiful holiday. But we're going to give away a prize. What do we got, yeah. Holly? We have kind of a angel starter pack. Mm -hmm. Little jump start. <laughs> little jump start. Okay. So we're giving away an eighth of a cut of felt. Yes. Mm -hmm. And some, um, your choice of MC1 color, a small amount. For like, skin tones. For skin tones. Yeah. And some armature, 22 yeah. gauge armature. The, the same wire we've been using today. Well, that's really fun. So someone could get a jump start, and you have a hat of names I somewhere. I do have a hat of names. So we're drawing names right now from everyone who has participated um, in the live chat. If you are watching the replay or the shortcut, well, we're going to be giving away different prizes on our next show, which is going to be next year. Um, you will probably let you choose whether you want this or what we're giving away then. But for today, and a happy holidays goes to... Oh, this is too good. Uh, I, right. <laughs> Where do you see? What's yours? I have Kathy Aldrich. And I have Angel Hewitt. <laughs> it's like it was meant to be. <laughs> congratulations, Kathy, and congratulations, Angel. And happy holidays, everyone. Whatever holidays you celebrate, we hope that you do something extra special for yourself, even if it's just make yourself your own little angel. And you're all angels to us. We appreciate you so much. Be good to yourselves and happy holidays, y'all. Happy holidays. Bye.